So what I'm going to do next here is to measure the uh, dome volume from the piston and I'm actually doing it in the cylinder so that I have the uh, a little bit of sealing around the piston for not to leak on the ring side and uh, then I will just uh, fill in this and I know how deep the piston is in the, uh, the bore so I can basically calculate the displacement and then see what the actual measured one was so that's going to be the dome volume. And I'm going to do the same thing for the old piston, just to be sure that it's exactly what I thought it should be. Okay, so the chamber is full now, or the bore with the piston. I'm just uh, going to wait a little bit, because this guy will take a while that all the fluid gets down. But we're close to 43 cubics right now. So after a little while I call this to 42.6 for the new piston and we'll see shortly what the new one is. Oh, sorry the old one is. Hmm? Next I'm gonna measure the old piston. 44 and a half for the old piston design. So it is actually more than I would have expected. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to remeasure the uh, new piston on the cylinder one, just to make sure, because I'm only expecting to see like cubic and a half difference, but it's it's a bit more now. So remeasurement here. So this is quite satisfying to watch <laughs> how the chamber uh, fills. So this is now the uh, second measurement <coughs> on the first cylinder just to make sure I got it right the first time. Okay, looks good, no air bubbles. And we'll just have to wait a little bit for this guy to settle. I call that one to be 42.7 for the new piston. Here, if you look at the caliper and the center of the piston dome, the piston is against the caliper. So you get the uh, idea how high the piston comes in the bore. If we look at the, uh, the old design, it's sitting in the same position in the bore, of course. And you see that there's several millimeters now from the top of the dome into the caliper. So even though the pistons look quite much the same, there's quite significant differences in the design. And it has taken now three iterations to get the, uh, the valve pockets, uh, all the positions, the depths of the pockets and so on to be right. So now it looks like when I remeasured uh, the cylinder number one, I got the same result that I got on the first time. So basically uh, the new dome will uh, have a 1.6, 1.7 cubics uh, higher volume than the the old one that's going to be pretty good for the compression ratio 37 and a half so that's the combustion chamber in the cylinder head cylinder number one exactly i measure every rod bolt also when I disassemble the engine so I know how much stretch there was in the bolts when I put them in and how much there was when I took them out. Ok, 
Okay, so this is cylinder number two. Yeah, it looks as good as the uh, cylinder number one was. So everything is in really, really good condition. Quick visual inspection. Nothing really to mention. There is a very little mark on the uh, side of the uh, the dome, and I noticed this also on the cylinder head. So actually, uh, there was not enough clearance between the uh, the piston and the cylinder head. In some conditions, it has slightly touched, but hasn't really caused any major issues. So bearings are in great condition. Also in the cylinder number two, the crank looks great. So now I'm going to open up the rest of the uh, caps. Okay, so we have a little more light in here. Uh, what I wanted to show, this is how all the... From the left to the right, it's only number one. The bearings are actually in really, really good condition. I just wiped them from the excessive oil. Uh, the bolts were good. The stretch was where I was uh, originally, or where I had set them originally. There's really nothing worth mentioning. The uh, everything looks really good. The only thing that I noticed, this is now 39 hours of uh, runtime exactly. I've had few cases where the oil temperature was really, really hot. So like over 150 degrees Celsius. And I noticed that when I opened up the, the bolts and pulled the rods, I could smell burned oil, like the oil smell you usually get when you tear down the engine. It's just regular oil smell. But somehow, now it didn't smell so good could be because of the uh, excessive temperatures. Uh, let me show here. You will see this uh, mark I mentioned earlier when the uh, piston has touched slightly the edge of the combustion chamber. Not sure when this has happened, but the uh, it seems that there's no carbon So maybe it's just uh, very close, too close. So we 3D scanned uh, the combustion chambers and made the piston dome to match the, uh, the chamber, but it was an average chamber because the chambers are not CNC machined. So I checked the tolerances with the, uh, with the wax, but the, uh, they seem to be close. But little differences here and there. So I'll need to check this again with the, uh, the new piston. There should be a bit more space in that spot actually with the new design. So we'll see. But I think I'm going to move ahead and uh, look how the crankshaft... Or what the crankshaft uh, looks like and then... Uh, I'm not going to spend more time with the uh, old rods and pistons. These are going to be just a spare set within the old cylinder block. It's all going to stay as a spare for the uh, future. If I ever have any problems, I can always put it quickly back together. New rings, just a hone. It's going to be good. Okay, so one thing worth mentioning. I noticed that the, uh, the coating on the piston skirt it's still there, but it, there's a lot of wear on it, so you can almost see the aluminum, the surface through it again. So this is how the new coating looks like, or the coating when it's new. And now it's definitely, there's not much coating left on the pistons.
Okay, so the crank spins really, really freely. And everything looks really good. I don't think the crank will need even polishing. I'm gonna measure everything, of course, and then check if I can find any scratches or marks, but based on the uh, bearings so far on the rods, there's no need to do absolutely anything for the crank. Okay, main bearings. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Yeah, I think the only only things seen on the bearings are basically some particles that has been uh, on the oil. Otherwise, they are pretty much perfect. Some slight polishing on the uh, center bearing, the third bearing, and the first on the side, but it's really nothing. Okay, and this is how the uh, the cap sides look like. There's definitely something has been here in the middle on the third bearing. And then again, I'm not sure if we can see it in the camera here, but the uh, the caps has been definitely walking on the on the block. They're polished again. And you can also see the uh, how the girdle you can feel it with the uh, the fingernail. So it's definitely not only the soft. Uh, surface on the uh, girdle but it's basically the cap and the girdle has been moving and I don't think the uh, the clamping force has been in the end what it was in the beginning because of the cap basically going into the girdle yeah so the crank looks pretty good there were some scratches on the pressure side on the uh, conrod I, or I wouldn't call them necessarily scratches but marks so that I'm definitely gonna take this to the uh, machine shop they're gonna polish it I can't really rotate it here so I need to take it to the shop but there's it's it's quite nice last time when uh, I had the crank on the table I just used uh, a very fine grid uh, sandpaper polished slightly if there was any leftovers from the bearings or, or the uh, anything on the surfaces I just cleaned them up but now I'm gonna take it to the shop